What's cracking? Everybody's there. Fel Rose here, bringing you some Pokemon Go Battle League content. Today's video, we're taking a look at a Master League team from Working Man here, featuring regular Palkia with Therian Landorus and Rhyperior. Very strong looking team here. These battles were done in the Ace Elo range. Let's take a look at these games, see how Working Man does this team here. Now, into the first game, we get a nice lead with Landorus. Now, you'll notice that this Palkia is running Dragon Tail. The difference between Dragon Tail and Dragon Breath, honestly, <clears throat> Dragon Tail is a three-turn move, is slower, obviously, but does slightly more damage than Dragon Breath. Dragon Breath is, obviously, you know, as a one-turn fast move, and it does a little bit less damage over the course of those three turns, but you still have that dynamic ability of having just that one-turn uh, move. So that that's kind of the difference here, right? So what we've got is Landorus looks like it's the safe swap on this team. The opponent comes in with their own Palkia here, and we're going to see Rhyperior likely to look to close this game. Now, Landorus is definitely one of the most obnoxious Pokemon in the Master League here, as it has access to that Sandseer Storm, gets there in 10 turns. But what I'm more interested in is seeing some Rock Wreckers in Draco Meteor's land. Yes, sir, that's what we're here for today, aren't we, folks? So... We're going to see this Palkia go for the Aqua Tail, taking, not even, not even able to completely knock out the Landorus, and at the last second, Landorus hangs on and says, Trainer, I got you. We're going to get this move off, and now the Palkia is within range of being farmed down here. Rhyperior comes in, oh, but to absorb an Aqua Tail, that's double super effective. That's going to hurt. Well, it doesn't hurt nearly as bad as I thought it would. Um, but I, I reckon that coming in with Palkia here to absorb that energy probably would have been the better play, but we'll see how this plays out as they do have the Landorus, but they are down shields, and the opponent comes in immediately after trying to catch a move on their Metagross here, and Palkia quickly responds as the game. I think they have refunded that charge move. I don't know. I wasn't able to tell, but uh, Palkia is going to be able to get to the Sockle Tail. The opponent over farming, I believe, here, unable to get to that Meteor Mash. Or maybe they were reaching for the Earthquake. But either way, they're going to go for a last second move. Palkia is all too happy to let this go as the opponent is literally sitting at 1 HP. And that means Rhyperior comes in, can shield one move, and get to this Rock Wrecker to take out the Lando. And this is going to be a good first game here. Boom! We got that. We're good. All right, getting into the next battle here. We got Palkia on lead versus Giratina. Very nice lead here as Palkia has that dragon tail damage to do super effective, but it looks like we're swapping out to check for a potential ground type counter in the back. Now the opponent looks to catch a breaking swipe and they're still going to catch a breaking swipe, but at least the Rhyperior knew something was coming in. Now the thing is here, and the reason why this is kind of smart actually, um, is typically speaking, the um, Giratina leads will have one of two things in the back. It'll either be Kyogre to deal with you know, some of the, the peskier steel types, right? Or, um, you know, maybe like, you know, me, no, I, don't even, I don't even know why the Kyogre exists behind Giratina. I just know they core somewhat well together, uh, obviously. But more often, you'll see fairies in the back. Now, this trainer's running Dialga. Are they going to respect this Draco Meteor? I don't know, but we're going to find out. Let's see if the opponent respects it. They do! Oh, they have to use their first shield. Then Landorus comes in here and is quickly able to get to a move, but the opponent's gear, uh, the opponent's Giratina swaps in to soak the damage here. Now the Sand Seer is going to get them about under half health. Landorus is going to shield a potential Shadow Ball. The opponent baits with the Ominous Wind, going for it, and not able to get to the uh no, they got the shield here, but we got they're able to get to the next move before Landers gets to the Sand Seer. The opponent does put up their final shield to the Sand Seer Storm. And if they're gonna throw a Shadow Ball, I imagine now's the time, and that's probably why this Landorus has put up a shield working man, knowing this is what's gonna happen. Over farming here almost perfectly. Is the opponent they didn't have enough energy for Shadow Ball, did they? No, they just went for the ominous win for some chip damage, but now this allows the Landorus to build up to two Sand Seers. Oh, the opponent in shambles as we get... <laughs> oh, no, dude. Everything's going wrong for this opponent now. It was all it was all in the bag until until that, that catch happened. Oh, that's unfortunate. Dialga's going to get fully farmed down here. And the Stone Edge is going to get unleashed by this Landorus. We're going to get another end of this game with a nuke. Boom! Well played. And I don't mean to laugh in disrespect. I was just, I was just like that. That came out because I'm just like, holy hell, what is going on right now? So Rhyperior, no, Landorus is going to swap in here to the Dialga. The opponent looking to catch the move, but they swap in Hydreigon, dude. 
I respect this trainer already. Hydreigon is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. Now, if you can see from the bulk, the, the Mud Shots plus an extra Sand Seer here will knock out. The opponent did give this Landorus plenty of HP head start, so I don't reckon that there's any way that this Hydreigon can, can flip this matchup unless the Landorus decides not to shield anything because now the opponent is forced to put down both shields as this trainer's over farming. Typically, when you're dealing with a Landorus when it has that quick sand here you want to be throwing your moves as soon as you can not maybe not immediately but as soon as like reasonably possible in order to avoid being um succumb to those those debuffs now we're coming straight in with Rhyperior the opponent comes in with a Mel Metal oh boy this is an interesting counter swap here but I guess you really can't come into Dialga here um especially since well I mean the Rhyperior actually doesn't have any shields so an Iron Head would have probably done quite a bit of damage here um, so the opponent is looking to go probably for superpower or double iron bash. They have the double iron bash. So actually, okay, now this makes a bit more sense. So the mud slap's the only super effective damage here, and it's just fast move damage. So superpower and ooh, okay, superpower and the double iron bash, opting to completely forego the rock slide here. So Rhyperior is almost gonna knock out this Mel Metal, but Mel Metal being left with little HP, perfect farm for the Palkia, and it's going to come down to whether or not Palkia can handle the opponent's Dialga. Is that Draco Meteor going to land? That's the question. The opponent comes in. Now they're going for the Sand Seer Snipe here with the Lando. Dialga can farm this down, though. This is a very dangerous game here. This is going to come down to whether or not the opponent swaps in Hydreigon and gives this Palkia an opportunity to farm it down. And unfortunately, that's going to spell doom here as Dialga loses CMP to Palkia. And doesn't matter if the Draco Mania is there or not, Aqua Tail takes it. Palkia getting it in the W. Good game. Getting into the next battle, we got a Shadow Mewtwo on the lead. This is awkward. We don't really have a solid response here, but it looks like the trainer's going to go into the lander of safe switch anyway. You're, you're forced to shield the Psy Strike here, which feels so bad. Because if you don't, it just... They don't shield the Psy Strike! <laughs> oh, look at the damage, dude! <laughs> oh! That hurt. That that was emotional damage on my side, man. That was painful. Oh, but the opponent goes for another charge move here before Landorus can get to a move. That means if we... Okay, they shield this one. And now that means that they can get to this one. Oh, but they caught on the Landorus. They were able to get to the move, but now Landorus gets to come in and farm down. And it gets three mud shots in. Now Palkia is going to come in. At least the attack is debuffed on the opponent's side. And they may have one or two uh, cycle cuts of energy here. So if this Palkia can over farm by enough, it might be able to land a move against the Mewtwo here as well. Now Palkia is going to go straight for this Aqua Tail. Look to get that damage in and farm down. Only one Sand Seer applied. Coming straight in with the Rhyperior. The opponent has a Zacian. If they have close combat, this is looking real bad. But they're going to go for the Breaking Swipe. This is a really risky bait because it's double resisted damage. The opponent respects the Rock Wrecker, and that means there's a win condition in play for this Rhyperior. We're going to see them no shield. It was the close combat, but now here comes Mewtwo going for this Rock Wrecker. Now it's all up to Rhyperior. Can it, with a shield, get to another Rock Wrecker in time before the Zacian gets to a move? Because if Zacian can get this farm down, or if they can get a move off here, they got to get the two moves. They, basically, they have to get the two moves. They go for the play roughest to not lower their defense, but the Rock Wrecker is reached, and Rhyperior is going to wreck this Zacian with rocks. Kaboom! Good game. <laughs> All right, we're getting into the next battle here right away. No, wait. Rayquaza! This is an awkward lead, but we're going to have to see how they handle it here. I think you'd have to stay in with the Palkia, and since you're slightly bulkier, looking to catch the breaking swipe on the Rhyperior here. Interesting play. It's I, I, it's, it's hard to say what the really like good play is, but the opponent comes in with a Metagross into the Rhyperior, even though the attack may have been dropped. I actually didn't see if the attack was dropped from that, uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter because the, the, the Mud Slaps are just, are just ripping through this Metagross. Is it worth shielding here? I think it might be worth shielding. Because you farm down and you have a breaking sw Oh no, dude. You have to double shield. They just barely made it. Getting two shields down against a Rayquaza. 
This might not go very well, as now that Rayquaza, I believe, is going to be able to farm down, and they can shield. Coming straight in with the Palkia, hoping he'll move off the over farm by one too many, and Rayquaza wins CMP. And now, all the damage remaining from these fast moves is all ground type. There's no good way here for Lando to come out of this matchup. You can't farm down a Rayquaza. It's a flying type. I mean, you could certainly try. And the opponent comes in with Xerneas. I feel like this is probably a little bit out of hand at this point. It, the, the losing situation here was unfortunately having to give up both shields and then losing CMP to the Rayquaza with the Palkia. That was just really unfortunate for this trainer here because I feel like if one of those two things doesn't happen, there's a much better chance of victory here. So snapping the win streak at four here against this team with Rayquaza, which I, I love Rayquaza, dude. It's it, I'm, I'm so sad it's not as common anymore, but good game. And the trainer picks up a 4 I, I transitioned right through it. They picked up a 4-1 there, and we lead into a Xerneas in the next game here. Rhyperior, no, I keep thinking, I, I always put Rhyperior, like Rhyperior's in the safe swap slot for where I usually put stuff. So I was like, oh, they're just going to save, no, they safe swap the Lando. I, I bozoed when I was putting this, these graphics together. Uh, but now, here comes the Palkia into the Lando safe swap, and Pal Palkia does not have a short up matchup here. As with an energy lead, Lando does indeed outpace, and Palkia going down multiple shields here in order to take this matchup is not exactly a good thing for it. But now the nice thing here is if you can get the Palkia down low enough, this is, yo, oh, yo, oh, you double shield, this is awkward. But you're hoping now that maybe you're able to outpace to this next move here, because if they, they threw immediately, then that should mean that the Palkia CMP ties with the Lando, but they decide to go down and take the shield advantage, and in comes Xerneas, and then they counter swap, or save swap, I don't even know what the technical term is, they just swap, they just swap into a, into a Lando, and the Stone Edge is gonna get reached here, the opponent going for that shield, and now this is going to be winnable, because the opponent made that swap, they saved energy on the Xerneas, maybe expecting there to be some other thing in the back that maybe was weak to it. I don't know what they were expecting to see in the back here, but Palkia is gonna be able to get to the Aqua Tail here. I was, I was actually hoping they were gonna reach for that Draco Meteor from being honest. So undercharging this move here, I don't know how this is gonna go. We're gonna have to see, because I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to get some farm here on the Rhyperior, knowing that they need it, or making sure that the, the Xerneas does not get any extra farm. They're trying to leave a situation open for the Palky or for the uh, for the Lando to win that matchup. Now the Lando's in the back with no energy. Landorus comes in and forces the opponent to throw here. Now it's all up to Rhyperior. And if I'm not mistaken, it definitely survives the um, the one uh, close combat. So the opponent needs to get to two, but they don't. They get to the back to back. I believe that was seven, but they're not going to win CMP. Rock Wrecker taken out. Boom. <laughs> The Xerneas, and Landorus gets farmed down. Good game. Getting into the next battle, we got a Dialga lead. This is no bueno for the Palkia, so they're going to swap into the Landorus. I got it right this time. Landorus is going to come in here, and the opponent has a... Ha? Huh? What are you doing here? Machamp! I haven't seen Machamp in the Master League in like five seasons. This is spice. And the opponent shields it. Oh, no. What do they, what do they have on the Machamp? They have payback? Rock slide. Okay. Well, I mean, Machamp is still strong, but oh man, that's wild. I was never. You know what though? With as many teams that disrespect fighting types in the Master League, I absolutely believe it when they say that they're bringing in a Machamp. And as high attack as Machamp has, Landorus still is able to win the CMP tie and gate shield advantage. And I believe Lando's not getting to a move. Oh, pain. But. You're able to take out the Machamp, which was definitely the hardest answer to Rhyperior. The opponent probably kicking themselves now for bringing in the Machamp too early. As they come in with Metagross, not as good of a matchup into the, um... Not as good of a matchup into the Rhyperior as the Machamp would have had. But, honestly, I think that there... You could go Rock Wrecker there, just because, if y'all don't know, Rock Wrecker is a Blast Burn clone. It's the same stats and energy as uh, Blast Burn. So you could certainly use that to do a lot more chip damage than a non-stab Breaking Swipe. Uh, but the Breaking Swipe, maybe they were expecting the opponent to shield there, possibly. Uh, so the Palkia is going to go and try and knock off with this Aqua Tail, get some chip damage in here, as all Rhyperior needs to do is just farm down the Dialga. Don't even know if they're at two moves here. This actually might knock out 
shielding up this first move here, making sure that they survive to get this farm down. The opponent hangs on with one HP, but doesn't have another move loaded. That's a good game. Getting into the next battle, we got Palky on the lead versus Toga. Oh! That's not good. Toga Kiss on the lead. I bet you there's a Kyogre back there. So the opponent is going to stay in this and try to charm through. And there's a Garchomp in the back, and they're running Dragon Tail, which is much, much more dangerous for Landorus. But Landorus is going to be able to offset all of those Sand Tomb debuffs that are coming with the uh, with the Sand Sears. Now, a foregoing timing a bit there, allowing the opponent to get a full move through. Uh, a little, I'm not sure if I agree, uh, but in this matchup, you never know, man. So the opponent is going to just go for the move here. They go straight for the Outrage. They go for the kill shot. That's going to take out the uh, Lando. But now Palky is still matched up against the Togekiss. So is it going to be able to get a move up? Or are they going to be able to swap right away? They got to go for the uh, Aqua Tail here. Do a little bit of chip damage here against the Togekiss. And then hope that Rhyperior can manage. No, there's... Okay. Oh, that charm damage is, is, is nasty. So, we're going to see the first shield thrown up here by Rhyperior. Most likely as it could be the Aura Sphere, and it was. And the opponent has a Melmetal in the back. Now, suddenly, things are looking up for this Rhyperior as the Melmetal is going to take super effective damage from all of these Mud Slaps. Breaking Swipes are going to do almost no real damage here except for some tiny chip, but their attack drop is huge. They're going for the Super Power. The opponent might go for double superpower here. This is huge because this is now debuffed. It does less damage than that first one would have done. And double debuffed attack stat. Man, if they get another debuff off of this breaking swipe, the next superpower won't even knock out. And now they're going to come in with the Palkia to try and absorb the energy. But now this is kind of risky because is this Palkia going to be able to get the shield? Because if it can't, then Rock Wrecker's not going to be able to KO. The opponent decides to let it go. Is the double resisted Mud Slap going to do enough damage? The opponent is not. I don't know if they're going to be able to get two moves here. The opponent shields this, but does the, does the Mud Slap knock out? Trainer, why aren't you throwing a move? Breaking... Huh? I mean, maybe the Mud Slaps knock out, but at least you should shield it, Trainer. Good game. Getting into the next battle, we get a dream lead here with Kyogre into the Palkia, and the opponent is staying in with their Kyogre, meaning that there's a solid chance that this Kyogre is not the only thing on this team that this Palkia is strong against. There probably is a Landorus in the back, if I had to take an educated guess, as Landorus is on just about every team. We could have full sent the Draco. I need a Draco to I need a Draco to land in this in these games. Can somebody Okay, so we're running Thunder on the Kyogre. You'll typically I've seen them typically run um I've seen them more more often run the um Oh it's a Groudon in the back. I've seen them more often um running Blizzard for Palkia, but Thunder definitely makes sense, especially when it comes to Kyogre mirrors. If you're seeing a lot of other opposing Kyogres. Thunder makes a lot more sense. Gonna block the precipice blades. Coming in with this land, or, uh, coming in with the Rhyperior, leaving Landorus in the back here. I, I don't know. Well, we had to save swap in because I think that was when they came in with Dialga. So maybe I should just pay better attention, right? <clears throat> but this is going to get very miserable for this Dialga as Landorus in the back. But now the opponent is left without or with two shields, and there's no shields left on the Rhyperior side. This has gotten from okay to risky real fast. Now, the Breaking Swipe's going to get the first shield. Are they going to respect the second one? Or they, they don't even need to respect it. They don't need to shield this. We don't need to shield this. The opponent lets it go, as they probably should, but they get the attack drop, and the opponent is forced to throw energy. This opens up the door for Landorus to come in and take advantage of this, as they're going to be able to get a second Sans or a Sansier off before the opponent's going to be able to get to another move, and it's all going to come down to a Palkia catch here, I think, if the opponent gets to this Draco Meteor or not. That's going to be the big thing. The opponent coming in. Doesn't matter. Palky has got energy. We're going for the Draco, baby. This is going to hit real hard. Draco. <laughs> Knocking the proverbial socks off of Dialga, and that's a good game. Palkia into another Dialga lead. This is not good. I expect us to see the Lando come in. Interesting play here to stay in and always throw an extra move just to be able to get ahead on energy for later. I like I like that idea. It's just really risky when you're dealing with people, uh, opponents using super effective moves. So, going to go for a Sandstria here. Trying to go for that good timing. They're going for the stone edge. Does the opponent respect this damage or not? They have to, right? Surely they do. No, they don't shield it. Oh, I don't know. I don't think you can farm down. Oh, that's unfortunate. 
almost enough, but not quite. Opponent gets the Surf off and knocks out the Lando. Palky is able to come in and farm, but it's not going to amount to very much. And the Switch Clock not being back up yet. Very, very risky. The opponent is waiting up their Switch Clock, however, and this allows the uh, this allows Working Man to bring in the Rhyperia right away. Had the opponent come in immediately, that would have been very, very problematic for Palky as it would have taken quite a bit of fast move damage before being able to swap out. So, the opponent's staying in here, and now they have a Xerneas in the back. Going straight for the Rock Wrecker. Let's see if the opponent knows if this is going to do enough damage. This is it. Rock Wrecker. Going for it. They land it. Now they can just go straight for the breaking swipes for the attack drops. The opponent is now forced to try and shield these breaking swipes as they did not get that bait call. And now everything is looking very good. Palkia in the back with energy. We got Rhyperior. Going to be able to farm down. Oh, we catch the close combat on the Palkia. Very nice catch here, as we're going to get this Moonblast. That's going to do a lot of damage. Palkia goes down, but there's a there's break, there's break Breaking Swipe. We got Rock Wrecker. I think, yep, all we need to do is just get the two Breaking Swipes here, and that'll do it here for this Rhyperior. Should be able to clean up house. Don't think that this Breaking Swipe, it, it's going to KO. I, it has to do enough damage. It's neutral damage, surely. Yep, it's taking out Dialga, even at that low health range. That's a good game. And Palkia... Landorus, Rhyperior, cleaning up in the AC low range, getting a 5-0 for this trainer here. Able to get them up to about 2,230 ELO. Very nice games here. I like I like, I like, like the concept of the team. Rhyperior really is very strong as long as it gets to stay off of Kyogre's, which is, I'm assuming, why Landorus is the safe swap on this team. Very nice gameplay here from Working Man. Appreciate you for submitting these battles. Trainers, if you'd like to send in your own battles here to the channel for shoutcasting, got a link in the pinned comment description. You can check that out. Send in your battles to the Google Doc in, the, uh, in that form there. So that's all for me for today, folks. Thank you very much for watching the video. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.